Are smartphone lenses worth it in 2022 when smartphones are so advanced and they have multiple cameras built in? Well, that's the question that I wanna to answer today. And if you stick around to the end, I will leave you with some of my top recommendations for lenses and other smartphone accessories. So with that being said, let's dive into it. What's going on creators? Anthony here from contentcreator.com and let's dive into today's topic which is smartphone lenses in 2022. Worth it or just a waste of money considering how far these smartphone cameras have already come? There's obviously a ton to unpack here. I'll tell you right now that in my eyes there is no black and white answer to this question. It's gonna depend on a variety of factors but if you stick around to the end, I'll go over all of my recommendations depending on where you are in your content creation journey. So let's rewind the clock by four to five years here. At this point in time, smartphones were really turning up the heat when it came to the quality of their cameras. I feel like it was the first time that people would really genuinely shoot content on their smartphones and it would turn people's head, right? Like it was just getting to that quality of good enough. I think the cameras still had a very far way to go, but that was when they started getting good. Most phones though only had one camera that could actually shoot usable content. So smartphone lenses started popping up on the market, giving people the ability to add more diversity to their shots by modifying their focal lengths. At this point in time, I think lenses played a really important role in smartphone content creation. Fast forward to today though, and most smartphones, especially ones being bought by people who want to take content creation seriously, have multiple cameras built in. My iPhone 13 Pro, for example, has three built-in cameras. The main camera has a 26 millimeter wide angle lens, and then you also have an ultra wide 13 millimeter camera and a telephoto 77 millimeter camera. So we have three cameras with three different focal lengths literally built into the phone, and they kind of cover the spread from pretty wide to zoomed in and telephoto. And that right there leads me into the short answer of this question. Do you need lenses as a smartphone content creator in 2022? In my eyes, no, absolutely not. If you have one of the most updated phones out there, something released within the last year or so, absolutely not. Do not feel like you need to go out and purchase a lens in order to maximize the quality of your content. Now, with that being said, lenses are definitely not like completely useless and it's still easy to make an argument for them in 2022, even if you have the most advanced smartphones out there. I can pretty much see two main reasons to keep lenses relevant. The first reason is the fact that not all of the cameras on our smartphone are built equally. Let's again use the iPhone 13 Pro as an example, knowing that most other manufacturers kind of follow a similar pattern as Apple does. The reason we refer to the 26 millimeter camera as the main camera is because it has the best technical specs by far. It has an aperture of f1.5, better focus coverage. The sensor itself is also larger than the others. And to top it off, the 26 millimeter camera has sensor shift stabilization. All of those factors combined mean significantly better image quality coming out of that camera compared to the ultra wide 13 millimeter or the telephoto 77 millimeter. Looking at just the apertures by themselves, you can see the ultra wide is only slightly worse coming in at f1.8 and the telephoto comes in significantly worse at f2.8. If you're unfamiliar with aperture and its effect on image quality, just remember that the lower the number, the better. The lower it is, the wider the diaphragm is, which allows more light to actually come into the camera and hit that sensor, which is good. We like light as videographers and content creators. And especially with smartphone cameras, the number one thing that's gonna cause them to have bad looking footage is filming in low light situations because those sensors are just so small, there's very little surface area for light to actually hit and then you know make our images look good. So having those higher apertures on the other cameras, the ultra wide and the telephoto, is gonna significantly limit their ability to take high quality footage in low light situations. Situations. Now, a lot of people think of low light as you know filming outside under the moon. Yes, that is very low light, but at the same time, filming in a house with just standard overhead lighting, most cameras are gonna classify that as low light and they're gonna struggle to make that image look good. So I just wanna be clear here and kind of define you know what is low light in the eyes of a smartphone. So in other words here, the main camera on the iPhone 13 Pro is freaking amazing. The ultra wide with only a slightly higher aperture is still pretty good, but man, the telephoto camera can seriously struggle with its image quality, especially when lighting conditions are anything but perfect. That higher 2.8 aperture seriously limits the amount of light that gets into that camera, which requires us to compensate
compensate by increasing the ISO, which is like adding digital brightness, but it comes at the cost of this ugly static noise, which makes our videos look really amateur. So let's circle back to the main topic here. Lenses are still somewhat relevant in 2022 because instead of relying on the somewhat bad built-in telephoto camera, you can actually buy a telephoto smartphone lens and then place that over the main camera, which then modifies that focal length to appear more zoomed in while retaining the higher quality attributes of that more advanced camera. It's pretty cool, right? Take a look at these two shots here. On the left, we have the built-in 77 millimeter telephoto camera. On the right, we have a third party 58 millimeter lens placed over the main 26 millimeter camera on the iPhone, which gives us a more zoomed in shot. And comparing the two against each other, it is undeniable how much better the shot with the third party lens is compared to the built in 77 millimeter camera. Now to be fully transparent here, this test was filmed indoors. We're next to a very big window with a decent amount of light, but realistically the lighting is still not great, especially on a smartphone. And that's why this image really struggles for that 77 millimeter camera. If we make the same exact comparison, but now we're outside with a ton of sunlight, the difference is much less noticeable. And I'd argue that the 77 millimeter lens is actually more desirable because it's significantly more zoomed in and allows me to get kind of closer to the subject. Now this same exact thing happens with the ultra wide camera as well. We start to see that quality drop off in low light situations, which is improved slightly with the help of a wide angle lens placed over the main 26 millimeter camera. However, since the aperture of the ultra wide camera on the iPhone is still relatively low, it's not quite as bad as the f2.8 on the telephoto, that dip in quality isn't quite as noticeable as it was when we were comparing the 77 millimeter with a third party lens. So that's reason number one why it might still be worth buying additional lenses. If you find yourself like regularly filming in areas where the lighting isn't that great, it's probably going to benefit you. But if you're outside filming with tons of great lighting, you're probably not going to run into any issues. Okay, reason number two is that there are certain lenses out there that do more than just help you get a more or zoomed in or zoomed out look with your content. They actually modify your footage in a way that really steps it up a level. And these lenses are absolutely worth considering depending on the style of content that you're shooting. You might have an idea of where I'm going with this one already, but the lenses that I personally love and they kind of just like boggle my mind at how cool they are, are the anamorphic lenses like the ones sold at shopmoment.com. I'll never forget last year, I was on a client project in Iceland using all of the expensive and kind of like heavy gear that you might normally see on a big commercial shoot. The owner of the business though, my client was kind of a camera nerd himself. He wasn't all that experienced, but he had an iPhone 12, an anamorphic lens and a gimbal. And he really just wanted to film like behind the scenes footage of the shoot while it was happening kind of just for fun. But it was crazy. He would come up to us after we were shooting, show us the shots that he captured. And it was comical at how we'd all just be like, that looks insane. That looks so good. It doesn't look like it was filmed on an iPhone 12 pro. It just really opened my eyes to like the quality you can get out of of a somewhat modern smartphone with a really cool anamorphic lens. I was actually so blown away that like on the shoot, I pulled up my phone, bought one of these anamorphic lenses so it would be at my house when I got home and I could start playing around with one myself. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the term anamorphic lens, it's basically a type of lens that uses complicated optics to squish the footage together. And then with a the click of a button, we can automatically unsquish this footage, stretching it out into a perfectly undistorted ultra widescreen aspect ratio. A lot of times you'll see people throw the black bars above and below their videos to make them appear more cinematic, which is cool. It definitely kind of mimics that effect. Well, shooting with an anamorphic lens truly gives you that aspect ratio without sacrificing any of the data from your sensor by literally just hiding it with black bars. Now, not only does it give you this naturally cinematic looking aspect ratio, anamorphic lenses also create these horizontal flares, which look super cool in my eyes, assuming they aren't too distracting. This is a popular thing you'll see in Hollywood movies. And most of the time it's because they're using anamorphic lenses lenses as well. Now, the fact that we can imitate this popular Hollywood look that usually costs tens of thousands of dollars to produce on a smartphone lens that only costs like a hundred or so dollars is incredible. And it's an absolute blast to use these. It really does feel like a cinematic cheat code in a certain way. So this past Sunday, we finally had a relatively warmer day up here in New England. So Courtney and I went hiking. 
I brought my gold flare anamorphic lens to film with and once I put it on, I pretty much never took it off. And then once I got home, scrolling through those clips, even on my high res iMac Pro monitor, they really do hold up more than I ever would have anticipated from a smartphone camera. If I were planning on shooting a short film with my smartphone, this would probably be the only third party lens that I use. Now back to the hiking content, because we were outdoors with decent lighting, I basically never used any of the other lenses like the 58 millimeter or the 18 millimeter moment lenses, simply because the built-in cameras were more than enough whenever I wanted a different look compared to the anamorphic one. And in fact, I actually prefer the built-in cameras because they're more extreme when it comes to the change in the focal length, meaning the built-in ultra wide is slightly wider than any third party lenses and the built-in telephoto is slightly tighter than any quality third party lens. But all right guys, that does it for my personal take on whether or not smartphone lenses are worth buying in 2022. Let me know in the comments beneath this video guys, do you use lenses? Do you own some already right now? Do you agree with my perspective or do you think that they're kind of a thing of the past as well? As a quick summary before I end this video, my absolute favorite smartphone lens is the anamorphic lens from shopmoment.com. I personally have the gold flare version, which I think complements filming outdoors a bit more than the blue flare version does. These lenses are great for cinematic short stories, travel videos, B-roll, etc. But on the flip side, if you're a talking head content creator like YouTube videos, interviews, and stuff like that, I probably wouldn't recommend an anamorphic lens to you. You just don't really see many interviews nowadays shot in an ultra wide aspect ratio with horizontal lens flares. The more standard lenses like the 58 millimeter or the 18 millimeter lens from Moment don't really seem that necessary to me unless you find yourself filming in low light situations quite often. I can tell you personally, I own these lenses and I very rarely ever use them just because it's one more thing I need to remember to carry around and it doesn't really add that much to my content when I'm outdoors filming with my smartphone. In my eyes, learning how to maximize your current gear is 10 times more valuable than any additional lens, gimbal, filter, or any other physical product can be. You'll progress so much faster in your career by mastering what you have right now and then steadily upgrading your gear over time, continuing to apply everything that you've learned from the previous sets of the gear compared to what I kind of think most people do, which is hold off on pursuing their content creation goals because they're waiting to buy that next set of gear. Now, if you're new to this channel and aren't familiar with what we have to offer at contentcreator.com, we've actually built the world's most affordable speed learning program for content creators. It's called 14 Day Filmmaker, and at the time of recording this video, we have over 45,000 happy students who always tell us they've learned more from this program in 14 days than they have from months of surfing through random YouTube videos. And what's even better for you watching this video right now about smartphone content creation is the fact that we just released our newest installment of the program, which is 100% focused on just smartphones. It's literally almost 100 videos dedicated to just smartphone content creation. It covers the filmmaking apps, the camera settings, the editing tools and programs, the recommended gear, and everything else you could possibly need to know to take the phone that you always have in your pocket and shoot content that truly makes you happy. We even have dedicated sections in the program for YouTubers, another for social media content creators, and finally a third section for people shooting commercial content with their phones. You can get lifetime access to everything in the course right now for the affordable price of just $48. I'd love to see you join in on the community. The link to enroll is in the description beneath this video. Other than that, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.